Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 24 of my Learn to Program series and part 5 of my TK Enter tutorial. Today, we're going to start wrapping up TK Enter by covering toolbars, list boxes, spin boxes, label frames, and a whole bunch more. And in the next part of the tutorial, maybe I'll create a paint application or something with Canvas. All of the code as well as a transcript of this video is available in the description underneath the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Alright, so I need to import some things, of course, just like always. So we'll import TK Enter, and then we're going to be working with images, so that means we'll need Pill also. So let's import Image as well as Image TK. And on, whenever I get to those parts, I'll tell you exactly what those two modules do for us. And let's go and create a class here. And like I said, I'm going to keep everything as simple as possible here and just cover these very specific topics. So we're going to create a static method and it is going to allow us to quit our application. And we'll set a event for none, of course, in case nothing comes over. And of course, to quit a TK enter application, we just call root quit. That's it. Next thing we want to do is to initialize everything here for us, and this is going to be past root, and we'll go and start creating some things here. Uh, let's say that I want to give my application a super wonderful title. This is how I do that, and I'll just call this toolbar example, because that's going to be the big part of this tutorial. And let's go and create a menu bar once again, so that this will be completely ingrained in your brain on how to create just a simple menu bar across the top of the screen and now what we're going to do is create our file drop down menu and we'll just pass it root and then set tear off equal to zero just like we did previously then we're going to add our menu drop down options and we're going to add those to the file menu and you do that by going add and command and then we'll just simply give these a label. Let's just say open isn't going to do anything. Obviously, from previous parts of the tutorial, you know how to use command to make open do all kinds of different things. And we're going to have another one, and we'll call this save. And then the final one, we're going to call quit or exit. And we will call command on this and call our little function that we made up here, the quit application. And to do that, we're just going to come in and go self and quit app. All right, so we have those in the little drop down that comes down here. Now we just need to add our drop down options to file. And to do that, we go menu bar and add cascade. And let's go and give this the label of file and then we need to associate the menu here with the file menu that we just created and there we go so we just created our little menu and of course pause the screen if you want to write all this stuff down it's also in the description underneath the video and now let's go and create our toolbar and to do so it's not as hard as you may think we are going to create a frame here and I'm going to put BD inside of here and that is just going to define our border width and I'm just going to let that be one and then we'll also come in and go relief and set that to raised and that's just going to draw a line underneath of our toolbar if you don't want a line there then don't put the raised inside of there now we need to go and get our images for our toolbar and these images are all going to be 24 by 24 pixels but of course you can make them whatever you want and I'm going to call this open image and this is where we use that module from up above that I talked about and we're gonna to have to say open and ping is what I called that and then I'm gonna create three items inside of the toolbar here there's open and we're also going to have save and that one is called disk ping and go and use whatever 24 by 24 characters you want to use or whatever thing you want and you could just look for three free icons or free images or type in an open image or something like that in Google you'll find all kinds of different things you can use and this one's called exit okay so we got those now we need to create a TK enter image to be used in our button and I am going to call this open icon and image TK and then we're going to go photo image and then we are going to pass in open 
image inside of that. And then we need to do that for all of our other different images we're going to have in our toolbar. So this is going to be called save icon and here we'll have save image and then this one will be called exit icon and exit image of course. Alright so now we have those already. Now what we need to do is create the buttons for our toolbar and I'm going to call this open button and that is going to be a button of course and we'll pass it toolbar and then the image we want to use inside of it is going to be our open icon and then we got to do that for all of the different options we have available here so we'll also have a save button and an exit button and then here we just go and do the same thing save and exit so pretty straightforward doing the same exact thing over and over again now we need to come in and set this up with our button and our image and this is going to be well make sure you spell image correctly and this is going to be open icon and you're going to do exactly the same thing once again for the save and the exit save and save and exit and an exit and there we are so pretty straightforward stuff let's go and scroll that up now what we need to do is place the buttons in the interface and to do so you go open and button and we're going to call pack on this and I'm going to have everything line up starting on the left side of the frame that we're going to be working with here. And let's say that we also want to come in and throw some padding. Let's say uh, padding for X and Y directions of two. And then do the same thing for the other two buttons. So you could say it's very, very straightforward. And of course, save and don't need to do anything there and exit. And there we are. Now after we have all of those set up, we need to go and call the toolbar and pack that. And I'm going to have the side for this be top. And I want to completely fill in the X direction. And make sure that's toolbar. And then after that, we go root and config. And menu is equal to menu bar that to handle our menu bar which we didn't do previously and then of course outside of the class we need to create everything so let's go and get oops can I spell root correctly there we go and then we'll go and create our TK object and let's go and define our geometry for our window and let's make it something like 600 by 550 and then of course we'll, we'll and just go app is equal to tk enter example that's what i called it correct yes that's what i called it and we need to pass it root of course and then to make everything run until we say for it to stop we call main loop and let's run it and see if i did that right and yes i did look at that guys there it is and if we click on this oh nothing happened why didn't anything happen well let's go and look Da, 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 da. There is the exit. Well, I know why it didn't work. It's because we didn't set it up to work. So let's go in here. Where is our button? Here we are. So there is the exit icon. And then we will come in and we'll go command and we will go self and quit app. And of course, get rid of these parentheses. And if we run it, there it pops up on the screen. There is our nice toolbar and click on that and it exits. Okay, so that's how you create a toolbar. Now what I'm going to do is jump in and show you how to create a list box. Alright, so I want some events to be triggered here whenever the user clicks on items in our list box. And we're going to have a function in call inside of here called on favorite food and select. Yeah, that's really long winded. And uh, so we're going to come in and this guy is going to have events equal to none by default. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go and get the widget that triggered this event. And to do so, you just go event and then widget. And we're going to have everything set up with indexes. So what we're going to do here is get the index of our list box. And to do that, we just refer to our widget. And then we say cursor selection 
parentheses and then zero. We then want to come in and get the value associated with the index. And to do that, we just refer once again to our widget and say get index. And then what we're going to do is we are going to refer to a label, which we're going to create here in a second. And what it is going to do is change the label based off the selection for the list box. And how you change a label's text is right like that, is equal to, and then I'm going to come in here and I'll say something like I'll get you and LB value. Okay, so that what we're going to do is create a list box and we're going to allow the user to go in and select different food items and then it's going to change the label based off of that. Like I said, I want to keep this very, very simple. So we'll go down inside of our initialization function, that's where we're still at, and create our list box. And a list box is just going to display a list of items that you're going to be able to select from. And why don't I cover something else? I was looking for a place to talk about label frames. Let's go and create one right now, even though it might be kind of ugly in this situation. So label frame is just a frame with a label, as you're going to see here in a moment. And to create one, instead of a regular frame, you create a label frame. And you pass it root, just like you would otherwise. And then you can put text inside of here. So I'm going to say something like food options is going to be that. And then if you want padding inside between you know, the outside of the frame and the actual widgets that are inside of there, you just add padding to it. And there you go. So there we are. And that's how you use or create a label frame. And now what we're going to do is create the label that is going to be changing. Let's just go and do this on favorite food. Well, let's just call this favorite food label. That's what we called it up here, right? Let's go make sure. Favorite food label. Yep, that's what we're going to be changing. And of course, it's a label. And we're going to put it inside of our frame here, our label frame. And let's throw in some default text for it. And I'm going to have something like, what is your favorite food and self. And we're going to have this be favorite food label and pack because we don't need to do anything else with that. And now we will create our list box. And to do that, we're just go, I'm going to call it list box. And you go list box like that, and you pass in the frame or whatever you want it to be inside of. And then if you want to create different list box options, you just say list box and you insert them. So insert, and we're going to give it an index as well as a value. So let's say spaghetti is one of the options we have. And let's go and throw a couple more inside of here. So there you go spaghetti and I don't know let's throw in four of them just to have something different and we'll change all these different indexes here so they are all different and who doesn't like pizza and we'll throw burgers inside of here and then we'll throw hot dogs inside of here because I can't think of anything else all right so there's hot dogs now what we need to do is tie an event whenever the list box items are clicked they are going to come up here and run this function so let's see if you remember how to do that to do it, we just go list box and then bind. So bind. And then we come in here and say what we want to bind to. And this is going to be list box select is the name for clicking on a list box item. And if they click on one, this is the function that is going to be triggered. That guy right there. Of course, get rid of those parentheses. And then we're going to say list box and pack so that it shows up in our interface. And then finally, we need to go LB frame and have it be packed also so it shows up. And if we run it, see if it works. Hey, look at that, it worked. All right, so it says, what is your favorite food? And if you click on spaghetti, I'll get you spaghetti, pizza, I'll get you pizza, burgers, hot dogs. Okay, cool beans, everything works. And now for the final example, I'm gonna show you how a spin box works. So once again, we're just going to stay in the initialization phase here, or initialization function. And what a spin box is going to do is provide a fixed number of values as an option for the user to select from. So we are going to create another frame. And this is going to basically ask how many of those different items the user wants. 
So let's go and create a just a regular old frame instead of a label frame. And I am going to call, or I'm going to create another label inside of here just for the heck of it. And let's call it label. And we will put it inside of SB frame, of course. And the text for this is going to be how many do you want? So ask them for their favorite food, and then we're going to ask them how many of those things they want. And let's just go and pack this away. And there that is. So that's all set up. Now what we need to do is create our spin box. And I'm just going to call this spin box. I'm going to create two spin boxes because there's a couple different ways of using or creating spin boxes. A spin box. And we have to define where it's going to go to. And if you want it to be within a set number of values, what you do is, for example, if you'd like it to be from and you have to put an underscore inside of there. From one to five, that is exactly how you do that. So we're gonna limit them in regards to how many they can get. And we'll go to spin box and we will pack it. And you're gonna see there's like little arrows on the right side that you're going to be able to select from, but you'll see that in a second. And that's if you wanna use a range of values. If, however, you'd like to put some custom things inside of there, I'm gonna go and create another label here equal to label and throw SB frame inside of there and then what we'll do is we'll say add on item so something else that they might want whoops and make sure you put text inside of there of course add on item and there is your label and we might as well come in and get the extras label and pack it as well into the interface and now it's time to create our custom item spin box and I'm gonna call this extras spin box and once again same exact thing spin box just like we did before and we're going to go SB frame just like we did before and now for your custom values you type in values is equal to and let's say french fries is gonna be an option and what else can we put inside of here onion rings and of course put those inside quotes i've been severely lacking in my quoting ability today and then we will put in tater tots hey forgot that thing again tater tots and there we go and for some reason i don't like tater tots very much and we will also come in i don't know why i'm talking so silly today we will go in and pack in our spin box and we'll run it to see if we got it and we didn't. What did we do wrong? Let's go make sure here. We got, oh, I know why it didn't work. We forgot to throw in our frame. So we'll go SPA frame and pack that as well and run it. And there you can see it did indeed work wonderfully. So we can go in, select spaghetti, and say we want two plates of spaghetti and we want onion rings with those. Or we could go and get burgers and you can see I'll get your burgers and we want five of those they won't let us get any more for health reasons and then we can select tater tots okay so there you go guys there is a whole bunch of other different widgets available for tk enter of course with python and then the next part of the tutorial i'm going to finish up tk enter by covering canvas so like always please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time